Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. So today's topic of discussion is in continuation with the previous uh, video lecture that was on DNS. So in the previous video lecture, I have explained how DNS works and what is the need for DNS. So let me explain now in this session the different terms that are used in this particular protocol. So DNS, you should know first thing is you can represent this DNS namespace, domain namespace, sorry, domain namespace in the form of an inverted tree. If you have to write at the root level, that is the root of the tree becomes the top server in the hierarchy, it is called as the root server. So normally you call it with the root. Then you have what the next level of servers and these are called as the top level or top domain level or top domain level servers. Then this can be further once again having what the next level of servers. So here I am just giving you randomly some like this you can maintain what certain levels here. But how many levels are possible? 128 that means 0 to 127. The 0th level is what always the root level. 127 levels can be maintained. Now we say when you are representing this domain namespace in the form of what inverted tree then the leaf nodes that are there here should always get one name no so that means every node that is shown here will have a name and what that particular name whatever you give you call it as a label and label should also have what maximum of 63 characters so let me give you one example wherein suppose you have the root here and i said no the top uh, domain level servers will always maintain what host addresses which are having extension with .edu and one more thing you remember the top level servers are always having references to the lower level servers, servers. Finally, when you get to the lower level server, we call it as authoritative servers. Those servers are maintaining what the mapping of what the host name with an IP address. Now, so in the domain namespace, if I have to give the names to each of these nodes that are present in the hierarchy to the servers that are present in the hierarchy, you take one particular uh, hierarchy start with the root the next top domain level server is the edu then from the edu let us take dce delhi college of engineering and delhi college of engineering is having one more under its name the server and it is called as uh, uh, let us take for example csc and you have one more called as uh, some lab name lab one something like this so you can see here the hierarchy here fine if i have to write the domain name starting from this so I will start like this lab one csc dot dce dot edu dot. So this is what this is called as the domain name. Here, if I have to write the domain name, I can write csc dot uh, dce dot edu. Here I can write down dce dot edu. This is here just edu. So this this is called as domain name this is the domain name here this is the domain name this is the domain name whereas dc is what the label this is label 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 so the label can be what up to 63 characters whereas the hierarchy can be up to from 0 to 127 128 levels are possible here in the hierarchy so this is how you have to remember that this is called as the domain namespace you have on the top that is always remember domain namespace is represented in the form of an inverted tree the topmost that is the root server is here followed by what the top level domain servers you call it as tld or in sometimes top domain level servers or t top level domain servers then you have the next level of hierarchy followed by next this way you can continue what up till 127 levels 0 to 127 levels are possible here in the domain name space now when we write the domain name we always have two types of names one is called as the partially qualified domain name and another is called as the fully qualified domain name so this partially qualified domain name does not end with a null string if i have to write here okay cs lab uh, what is the label name i have taken lab1 fine lab1 dot csc dot dce dot edu dot dot edu dot so up till here that means i have ended with a null string if i am writing any domain name ending with a null string it becomes what it becomes a fully qualified domain name if i am not ending the domain name with a null string it becomes a partially qualified domain name 
Similarly, if you remember when you are writing the URLs also, see whenever you want to open a particular web page of a website, you type the URL on the uh, this one address bar. When you type the URL, even URLs are of what two types? We have the relative URL okay, and the absolute URL. If I have to give an example for this, you have what absolute URL and the relative URL. If you have to write the absolute URL, you start writing like this, no, www, fine. Just let me give one example. Uh, computer notes is the server name, fine. Then you are writing slash uh, some, uh, com, uh, what is that, some application layer. Then followed by what some more inside that application layer if you are interested in reading about FTP then this is the web page that means it is taking you to the exact location that is where that resource is located completely it is taking you to that particular location. Now if we are using only a part of this like application layer slash FTP it becomes a relative URL. Normally, relative URLs are used to assign or add what some uh, web pages to the existing website only. But here to uh, go to that particular what to that particular resource, you are typing the complete name here, the complete URL. So that becomes the absolute URL, whereas this is a, a relative URL. Similarly, when domain names are written, you call it as partially qualified domain name and what is it fully qualified domain name fully qualified domain name will take you up to the root level that's why the last character that you are typing is dot dot is a null string which refers to the root server fine if you are not ending that domain name with a null string it becomes a partially qualified domain name so here at this stage you should know the differences between this partially qualified domain name and the what is that fully qualified domain name absolute url and relative url so now coming to the next uh, subtopic here, you should know about the generic domains and the country domains. As you have seen that you are writing the, uh, see you can look at this particular top domain level servers, the names given are as edu, gov, mil, org, all these are called as generic domain names. But if your domain names are having only two letters, those are mainly meant for the countries and we call it as country domains. And you can see here, these domain names are also under the root server and these domain names are also under the root server. That means what I am trying to say is, here we say these are the top level domain uh, servers and here also I am telling these are the top domain level servers. That means now when there is root server in the complete, that means in the entire world has got 13 root servers. 13 root servers are there. So, for this particular category that is all the country domain name servers come under one more root servers and you have to make use of two letters only for the country domains. You can look here US for United States, IN for India, FR for France, CA for uh, Canada. So, this way you can make use of the country domain names and look here if you want to go to the next level in India just simply I am just showing one more level in the hierarchy it is called Karnataka then here I am writing Bangalore. So when I am writing the index to address it will become bangalore.kr.in. So this is how the domain names the host names are related with all the servers that are present in their above level in the hierarchy. So we have the generic domains and the country domains. So the next uh, information you need to know is about zone. Zone definition if you look here I will just project it very, this one. You, what is server is responsible or has authority over it is called a zone. In other words, collection of nodes or subdomains under the main domain is a zone. Now, to understand this zone information, I will just give you one uh, diagram here. See, already I have one diagram. Let me continue with this only. you have this kind of hierarchy okay you are having completely what you uh, levels one below the other now certain nodes are grouped and we call it as under one domain for example this particular nodes or the host comes under one group and we call we we call this particular as one domain now this domain can be further 
divided into subdomains. Let us assume this is one subdomain, okay, and there is one more subdomain like this. So this subdomain is having what two nodes, and this subdomain name is having what three nodes. Now these two subdomains, if I have to write like suppose I can group once again these two subdomains, and I can call this as a zone. Zone is what a collection of nodes or subdomains under the main domain. So, like this, the entire level of hierarchy which is present here, the server's hierarchy, you can group into domains, and each domain can be further divided into subdomains, and certain subdomains can be grouped, and you can call it as a what a zone. Zone will always have information about what that means. A server is not taking why this subdomains and zones are coming into picture is the server is not doing the responsibility completely. It is dividing its responsibility to other servers also. So we call it as subdomains. So for all the uh, servers that are present in one zone or belonging to a zone, a primary server is responsible to keep the information. Whatever is the updation carried out or modification carried out, it is always what it is stored in the primary server. And the primary server is also having a backup called as secondary server. Secondary server will never have any authority to modify or update a zone information. Rather, it will only collect the information, the updated information from the primary server. So, if primary server fails, then definitely you have what an alternative called as secondary server. So, this is what we say the, the level of servers or the types of the servers also which are there in the system. Root server, primary server and the secondary server. Now, this zone information is always kept in a file called as zone file. So, the server which is responsible for the zone will always update the zone file. And the zone file information is the, the server that is maintaining the zone file information is called as the primary server. The primary server will update, it will modify automatically any uh, this one mapping of names to addresses are included or deleted that is called as updation and it will be immediately what the secondary server will also get that information. Now to check the primary server and the secondary server, see if in your device also you can check what is the IP address that is uh, allotted to you. I mean to say the DNS server, the DNS server, what is your DNS server? Now, when you are using a device, you know that suppose if I am using my mobile phone, I have the IP address, fine, and also I have to which class that IP address belong, that means I will get the uh, mask value also, whether it is class A, class B or class C, then uh, I have the other informations, whether it is a DHCP or automatically assigned, so that information is there. Now, if you want to see what is the DNS server also, you just type at the command prompt, see you have in your system the command prompt no you just type there ip config slash all then you will get the complete information about your device what is your ip address what is your subnet mask and what is the dns server so there actually when you are configuring your device you have selected the dns servers as what you have allotted the dns server as 8.8.8 .8 secondary server as 8.8.4.4 .4. these are the uh, so IP addresses that can be seen. So, you can check now also Google is offering two DNS servers for public use. So, these are the pub, for the public use two DNS servers are given and we the IP addresses are what 8.8.8 .8 and the secondary server this one is for the primary server for the secondary server it is 8.8.4.4. Eight so, this primary and secondary server you can check in your uh, device. Right now also you can type at the command prompt if you are using uh, your uh, this one uh, laptop or desktop whatever it is at the command prompt you just type ip config slash all you will get the complete list of what the information related to your device. See in your machine when you are typing the website web address definitely it has to get mapped with an ip address. So the dns servers which are helping your machine in order to translate that web address to the ip address those dns servers ip addresses you can see in your uh, device. So, this was all about what uh, actually I wanted to tell you about zone. So, I have just uh, explained in detail about the primary and secondary servers also. Uh, resolution, uh, iterative and recursive, I have explained. Caching is what I had told you, you know, every time whenever a mapping of host to IP address is not found in the local server, in the cache of the local server, it will try to refer to the next level servers that is from this, it will start from the root server. 
So that is how the caching will help. Whatever mapping is obtained after a query, it always stores in its cache. So that the next time, if the operating the resolver is uh, the operating system is asking a query to get an IP address, it can immediately give from its cache. Encapsulation. So here. Yes, encapsulation is definitely, this information is definitely needed. See, you are in your TCP IP protocol suit, the application layer, then the transport layer. So, for all the previous, uh, this one also you have been seeing uh, how the message from the application layer gets encapsulated in the transport layer. If you remember from the application layer, actually here is the user. The user is using the application and the message gets now, uh, move to the transport layer. In the transport layer, you have UDP and TCP. Now, this DNS, this application layer DNS, this protocol, uh, it can make use of either UDP also or TCP also. As long as the message is lesser than 512 bytes, it makes use of the UDP protocol. If it is exceeding 512 bytes, it will make use of the TCP protocol. And in both this, it will make use of the port number 53. Now, port number information is also a must. DNS, what is the port number? 53. Hope you remember for the previous protocols also, HTTP, the port number is 80. FTP has got two port numbers, 20 and 21. One for the control connection and another for the data connection. And for DNS, the port number is TCP. So, the message get encapsulated here. That means the transport layer takes the message and it will add its header and then send to the network layer. So, that is about the encapsulation. And you have a authority called as registrar. See, when I was explaining you about uh, uh, this one, what is that? Uh, the authoritative server is the one which is sending the mapping to the local server, to the resolver. Now, how does the top domain level server knows which authoritative server is maintaining the host name, whatever the client has requested? So, that particular information is updated because of what whenever a particular organization, a user decides the host name, they have to get registered the IP address and the host name under the authority called as registrar. There is some fee, all that formalities need to get completed and you can see which are the different registrars are obtained that is present in the uh, website HTTP. Okay, www.intenic.net. In this, you can see the list of registrars. So, a mapping that is the host name and the IP address mapping should get registered here under this particular authority. That will be what once again updated to the top domain level servers. So, that whenever a query comes from the client, they can easily refer so and so is the authority to your server that is maintaining. Because when you are registering, you are supposed to include the name of the authority to server also or the system is having a mechanism to add your details to one particular authoritative server. So, that information will be conveyed to the top domain level servers. This is how the information each server is having what I said no, normally the top level servers are having references to the lower uh, level servers to make this mapping of IP address and uh, host name uh, to get reach to the client that is requesting. Next comes what NS lookup. NS lookup is a command. You can type this command and you will get to know the IP address of a particular host name. You just type the command NS lookup and then type what the host name for which you are interested to know what is the IP address. You can type www.facebook.com then immediately it will show the IP address of that. So, this you can do it in Windows operating system. So, this is all about what the complete information about the domain name system. Hope this information is useful to you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.